In today's video, we're going to build a fully dynamic calendar in Excel that updates automatically. This will help you organize your days, track important events, and never miss a deadline again. And the best part? You won't need any complicated formulas, just a step-by-step -step process that anyone can follow. Stick with me until the end, and you'll have a fully functioning calendar that adjusts to any month and year with just a couple of clicks. Let's get started. I have already opened this Excel file called Calendar. I have a link in the description so you can download the same file and follow along with me. Now before we dive into the technical side of things, let's set up the basic framework of our calendar. The first thing we need is a place to enter the year and month. Instead of typing this manually every time, because who has time for that? We're going to make it easier by creating a drop-down list so you can switch between different years and months effortlessly. I am on the Year Month List Worksheet. I have created a simple column with the years starting from 2000 and going all the way up to 2030. Then in the other column, I have listed out all 12 months of the year. Now to make this useful, we need to turn these lists into drop-down menus using data validation. This means that instead of typing a year or month every time, which, let's be honest, can lead to typos, you can simply select one from a list. Let's go to the calendar sheet. I have created only two cells, year and month. Click on B2. From Data tab, click on Data Validation button. From Allow box, select List. Now click on Source, and from this sheet, highlight all the years. Click OK. And we have a drop-down list that we can select any other year that we want. Let's do the same for the months. Click on D2 from the Calendar Sheet. From the Data tab, click on the Data Validation button. From Allow box, select List. Click on Source and let's highlight all the months. Click OK. Now we can simply select any year or month from the drop-down without typing manually. This little trick will save a lot of time and keep everything structured. Now that we have our year and month set up, let's create the calendar grid. Starting from B4 to H4, type the days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way to Sunday. And I will highlight the column from B to H and change the width to maybe 5. Let's also center the cells. Alright. Okay, I'll merge and center the year and month cells. Great. Maybe I'll increase the height of the row to approximately 35. It's time for the background colors. I'll apply a light orange color for years and a darker orange for months. Same goes for the dates. A light orange for weekdays and a darker orange for the weekend. Finally, I will change the width of column A and the height of rows 1 and 3. Below this, we need to create a grid where our dates will appear. Typically, a calendar spans 6 rows for weeks and 7 columns for days of the week. So we're just going to have 6 rows here and I will change the height of these 6 rows to about 30. Okay. Let's jump right into building the structure of our calendar. We'll start by using the sequence function to automatically generate the numbers for our calendar grid. Go to B5 and enter this formula. Equal sequence open parentheses 6 comma 7 comma 1 comma 1 close parentheses and enter. Let's explain the formula in detail. The first number 6 represents how many rows we need. 
Since a month can sometimes span over six weeks, we set this to six. The second number seven represents how many columns we need. Since a calendar has seven days in a week, we set this to seven. The third number, one, tells Excel where to start. Here we want to start at one, so we set this to one. And the fourth number, one, tells Excel how much to increase each number by. Since we want the numbers to increase one by one, we set this to one. So when you press enter, the sequence function automatically fills a grid with numbers from 1 to 42. Six rows multiply by seven columns. Right now, these are just numbers, but soon we'll convert them into actual calendar dates. Now let's continue to format. First, I'll highlight the weekends to make them bold. This makes it easier to differentiate weekdays from weekends at a glance. You don't want to accidentally schedule work on a Sunday, right? Also, I'll fill all the dates with a light gray color. And let's add a border. Select a white color from the line color, a thick line from the line style, and choose all borders to the calendar grid to keep it structured. Great! Maybe I will remove the grid lines of the sheet. Good stuff. Now that we have our basic setup, we need to make sure that our calendar knows when each month starts. If we enter a month in a year, Excel should automatically figure out the first day of that month. To do this, we're going to use date value function. This function that takes our selected year and month and gives us the correct date for the first day of that month. So let's click on cell K5 and type first date. And in cell L5, we're going to calculate the first day of the month using date value. Type equal date value parenthesis one ampersand D2 ampersand B2. Let's explain. The date value combines the number one, which is the first day of the month, the selected month name, which is in cell D2, and the year, which is in cell B2. Enter. And we get a number. So the date value function takes this text and converts it into a real date that Excel can understand and using calculations. This is useful because Excel stores dates as serial numbers. I will change this number to the actual date. Nice. But that's not enough. We also need to determine which day of the week the first day falls on. That's where the weekday function comes in. This function tells us whether the first day of the month is a Monday, Tuesday, or any other day of the week. No more second guessing or flipping through physical calendars. Click on K6 and type start day. And in L6, we're going to use the weekday function to find the start day. Type equal weekday parenthesis L5 comma 2. What does this formula do? The weekday function takes a date, in this case L5, the first day of the month, and returns a number representing the day of the week. The two number in weekday make sure that Monday equals 1, Tuesday equals 2, all the way up to Sunday equaling 7, a more logical way for calendars. Close parentheses and enter. The result is 6. The number will help us correctly align the first day of the month inside our calendar grid. Now comes an important part, filling in the actual dates of the calendar. Now we need to adjust our sequence function so the first date of the month aligns correctly with the right day of the week. Combining the date value weekday and sequence functions, we ensure that every month is displayed correctly, no matter what year or month is selected. Let's click on cell B5 and type equal sequence parentheses 6 comma 7 comma L5 minus L6 plus 1 comma 1. Close parentheses and enter. Let's explain the formula in detail. 
Cell L5 gives us the first day of the selected month, for example, December 1st, 2024. Cell L6 tells us which day of the week that first day falls on. Example, if it's a Sunday, then L6 equals to 7. The L5 minus L6 plus 1 shifts the first number backwards so that it starts on the correct weekday. The rest of the sequence function then continues filling in the remaining days. To ensure the numbers appear as real dates, select B5 to H10. Go to Format Cells, Custom, and type the DD format. Now the numbers will be converted into actual calendar dates. So for February 2025, the first of the month starts on Saturday. Now how cool is that? Now let's take things a step further. Wouldn't it be great if today's date was automatically highlighted? This way you wouldn't have to scan through the entire calendar to find the current day. We could achieve this using conditional formatting. We'll create a rule that checks if a cell contains today's date, and if it does, it will be highlighted in a bright color like orange. This means that whenever you open your calendar, today's date will instantly stand out, making it much easier to locate. No more excuses for missing deadlines. Alright, let's select cells from B5 to H10. Go to Conditional Formatting and choose New Rule. Choose to use a formula and type equal B5 equal today. From the format menu, choose orange as the fill color. Then click OK. Now today's day will always be highlighted whenever you open the file. However, I want to expand our dynamic calendar with two advanced features. The first one is to adjust the sequence function for the real dates and hiding previous month's dates. So I want to make sure that the calendar starts on the correct weekday and only displays dates from the selected month. Replace the formula in B5 with this. If the month of this date is equal to the month of the date in cell L5, then display the date. Otherwise, display a blank cell. What does this formula do? The sequence generates a grid of dates starting from the first visible date in the calendar. The equality month of this sequence equal to the month of cell L5 checks if each generated date belongs to the selected month. And finally, the if function ensures the dates outside of the selected month are replaced with blanks, so we don't see them. This makes our calendar cleaner and easier to read. The second advanced great feature is to be able to add automatic holiday marking. If you have a list of holidays on another sheet, wouldn't it be nice if your calendar automatically recognized those dates and highlighted them? Well, we can do exactly that. First, we need a list of holidays. Let's create a new worksheet, and let's rename it to Holidays. Now I will paste some USA holiday dates for 2025. This is where our COUNTIF function will check for matches. Maybe I'll drag the sheet before the calendar. Alright, return to our calendar sheet. Now, let's make holidays stand out in the calendar. We will use conditional formatting to highlight these dates to match our holiday list. Highlight cells from B5 to H10. Go to Conditional Formatting, New Rule. 
We'll use a COUNTIF function to check each date in our calendar against the predefined holiday list. If there's a match, the cell will be highlighted so you can instantly see holidays at a glance. This is particularly useful for planning vacations. Let's type equal count if parentheses B2 to B20 from holidays worksheet comma B5 close parentheses greater than zero. Press the format button and choose bold and red text. Click OK. This function checks if the value in B5, a date in the calendar, exists in the holiday list. If it finds a match greater than zero, that means the date is a holiday. The cell will be formatted differently to make it stand out. Now any holiday on your list will automatically be highlighted in red whenever they appear in the calendar. Your dynamic calendar is now fully functional. Try selecting different months and years. The dates will update instantly, and the holidays will automatically be marked. Once we have our calendar fully set up, we can take customization even further. There are several ways to improve it, depending on your needs. For example, we can create a color-coded event system where different colors represent different types of activities. For example, work, personal, travel, birthdays, yes. Don't forget birthdays. Or you can expand the calendar into a yearly view, or even a weekly planner for more detailed scheduling. The great thing about this calendar is that it's completely customizable. Please feel free to experiment with different layouts and see what works best for you. After all, Excel is like Lego. There's always a way to build something cool. And there you have it. You've just built a fully dynamic calendar in Excel that updates automatically, highlighting important dates, and makes planning incredibly easy. You no longer have to create a new calendar from scratch every year. Just select the months and year and everything updates instantly. It's like Excel magic, but with formulas instead of wands. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss future Excel tutorials. Also, let me know in the comments, what other Excel tricks would you like to learn? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy organizing, and may the spreadsheets always be error-free.